On this Friday installment of Locked On Texans, we will have an opportunity to catch up with former Houston Texans coach Romeo Cannell to see what has he been up to since he retired from the game of football. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Friday edition of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn jobs help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL. I'm John Hickman. This is Cody Davis getting ready to gear up for the weekend. Wait, 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 I got something uh, to say. I got something to say. What, what you the got? What Astros you got? won game two. Look, they won by the time we hit record this time. <laughs> We're sorry. We're sorry. Listen, which, you know what? Which, by the way, y'all should enjoy the live reaction. I I, uh, I showed a coworker of mine, and Astros won 4-2, so of course make sure you check out the Locked On Astros. But I showed a coworker. Uh, of mine, the, uh, the 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 live reaction, right? And I explained to him well, we recorded this before, and mm-hmm. this is the point where, and I say, you know, Astros won, and Cody goes crazy. Like I think that's the great thing about sports, like the initial quick reaction, nothing that you have time to sit and, and think on. It's just it's just happening, right? And, and that's exactly. what happened with the Astros. Um, you're done, man. Another one, another one. Super impressive with that young man. And, by the way, Carlos Correa opted out with the Minnesota Twins. So. Reunion? I might have to check the Locked On Astros out myself over these next I don't couple know, days. Man. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that'll be. Listen, I'm pretty sure he's looking at the Astros having fun right now. Like Squidward, whenever he looks out the window <laughs> and sees Patrick and SpongeBob having a, the good old time of their life and thinking to, them, to himself, I should have stayed. Because mm, he should have mm, stayed. Mm. Well, you know it's Friday. We're going to dive into these YouTube comments. My boy Patrick Harris. QB on the clock. Mills is not that guy. <laughs> Boys want to blame Pep. He's handicapped. But he has what he has to work with. Um, listen. I'm going to repeatedly say this. For the Houston Texans. If they get one of those top draft picks, which as of right now, I think they sit at five or six if the draft started today. You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think they are maybe number one or two. They're not going to draft a quarterback. If the Texans have an opportunity to draft either C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, but they also have an opportunity to maybe draft Will Anderson or Jalen Carter, I'm not drafting neither one of those quarterbacks. Now, that's not to say I'm not drafting a quarterback next year. By the way, I don't think Will Levis is the guy. But Hooker, the young man out of Tennessee, maybe he's one of those late-round draft picks that Houston can invest in, uh, or maybe they find another quarterback in the market uh, in, in, in the draft next year. Mm-hmm. But in terms of first-round pick, man, I'm not doing it, Cody. That's just me talking. You're not – Drafting a quarterback in the first round? I'm not, no. I'm a believer in CJ. And of course there's Bryce Young. I think if it's out of those two guys, you 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 have to make that decision and draft one of those two guys. And John, I understand it. I get it. I know, you know, when it comes to CJ, you do have your concerns, but I, I think CJ is different. But Even if the Texans don't draft neither one of those guys, are you looking at a situation where you'd be okay giving Davis Mills another year? Because I really, because first of all, I, I do think if they are top five, top 10, they're going to have an opportunity to draft one of those guys. But as you just alluded to, you know, you don't draft neither one of those guys. You, you know, maybe they get taken earlier than expected or, or whatever the case might be. At that point, do you give Davis Mills another opportunity? That would be that's my question a, to you. That's a great question. Um, 
So I, I look at it like this. It depends on how they feel this roster out. Now, as this roster is currently constructed, even if you would drop one of these top quarterback prospects coming out next year, you're not expected to win a lot of games. Now, of course, next year Houston has a ton of money in free agency they can play around with. Of course, next year the Houston Texans draft capital will be lovely, just like this season it was, this, this draft. So I think it does depend on what they view that season as. I'm not a big believer in tanking, so I'm not advocating for tanking. I'm advocating to be competitive, but I'm also advocating for filling important desired holes. And I'll say this, the, the Texans chose the Texans chose Lovey Smith to be their head coach. As of right now, and I hope you guys check out the, the mega crossover Houston edition that we did with Big Sarge and Brandon K. Scott for Thursday's episode. As of right now, like, do we believe the – quarterback situation, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the defensive situation is going to change for next year. Do we believe Levy Smith, do we trust Levy Smith to play the defense differently? Well, if the answer is no, and for me it's no, because I haven't seen anything otherwise, then there's two areas of need. Number one, somebody that can cause pressure. I've been on record by saying either you go with Jalen Carter, um, who is the, the, the big man up front at your in the d- defensive tackle position, that could really allow you to stop the run, something the Houston Texans have not been able to do since the departure of DJ Reader, or you go out there and you get a bona fide player that can get after the quarterback, which is something the Houston Texans have not been able to do consistently for the past couple of years as well. Both of those are going to help your, your, your defense your defense out. And then, boom, you look at another issue for the Houston Texans. On one side, it's stopping the run or getting after the quarterback. On the other side, it may be a playmaker on the outside, right? And, and I think that if we, we do not think that Lovey Smith is going to change his defensive philosophy, then what's the point of passing over, arguably like they did this year with Jordan Davis, another interior defensive lineman that could really help out your defense? I mean, getting gashed how they do against the run has been so bad. Sometimes it's morally unacceptable to watch. I feel like a sin. It's a sin when I watch them get ran over that bad. And again, this, these are my thoughts. I'm not drafting the quarterback with that first overall pick. If Will Anderson, if uh, Jalen Carter is available on the board, look, this is a this is a discussion that we probably going to have up until the day of the draft. Because while I understand all of your points and all of your concerns, John, I look at it on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage, and I think to myself. How can we go another year with Davis Mills still targeting Brandon Cooks, who will probably take another step, uh, another decline at this point in 2023? How can we go another year with Davis Mills still targeting Rex Burkhead? How can we go another year putting all of the offensive struggles on the shoulders of Pep Hamilton? And we know that he's handicapped. There's only so much he can do. And once again, I understand it. And I'm not using this as an excuse, but it's hard for me to still come out and say the defense has been god awful. And yes, the Houston Texans are bad at stopping the run, but at the same time, the offensive side of the ball isn't doing anything to help them as well. Because by the time they get on the field, as I've been preaching since the start of this season, they be gas. And that and the, and the main problem of that is Davis Mills. His his inability. To, to help the Houston Texans sustain offensive drive. So, look, this but is a, but this is this conversation at, we're going to continue having, though. Absolutely. But let's also look at the, the, the free agent quarterbacks for next year. Nobody's coming just, here. Unless they get but, lucky but, and break the brakes for, for, for Lamar Jackson and get well, him to sign a trade. You mentioned Lamar Jackson, but we've heard over and over again that this offense, Pepper Hamilton and this offense, would do wonders if anybody else besides Davis Mills was their quarterback. Now, granted, we have 12 more games of a full evaluation that we have to give them. Mm-hmm. However, if we feel that way now, let's say Houston goes out and maybe look at a Jimmy G. I don't like it, but maybe yeah, they feel like no. they'll be able to win a few extra games compared to what they've been able to do with Davis Mills. Let's say they look at a Daniel Jones. 
let's say they look at a, one of these bridge quarterbacks, a Geno Smith who's balling right now. Uh, let's say they look at Lamar Jackson, if they have the money, and they probably will have the money for that. But they, there may be some quarterbacks that in free agency next year, Houston believes can at the very least bridge a gap to make this team a little bit more competitive than what they've been under Davis Mills. And if they feel that way, this is now, now I'm speaking for an organization that has constantly chose this route, whether or not it's been under Bill O'Brien, whether or not it's been under Nick Casario so far. So far, they have constantly went with a very mediocre quarterback, and that's simply because maybe money, Watson was an issue, but back under Bill O'Brien, we've seen the, the Brock Osweilers, the the the, uh, the your boy, my boy that's in New England right now, the Brian Hoyles of the world play for the Houston Texans. And it's a culture thing, regardless of how we feel. They're not going to make a move on a quarterback. I don't think so, unless they 100% believe in their quarterback. Do they feel that way about any of these quarterbacks coming out next year compared to some of the other prospects? Because Jonathan Gennard, who has been somewhat absent this year, he didn't play on Sunday, and Houston didn't have an opportunity to sack the quarterback, only one QB hit. Right now, their leading sack guy is a 35-year-old Jerry Hughes. That's an issue. Right now, their leading defensive tackle is a vet who has played some, you know, pretty good football, Malik Collins, who does not have any help. They have Roy Lopez, a six-round draft pick from last year, and an undrafted uh, defensive tackle, and Kurt Hennish playing uh, alongside of him, along with Thomas Booker. That is a huge issue. If you don't stop the run in this league, yeah, you're going to be bad for a very long time. I think Houston did a very good job of setting the foundation this year for getting Jalen Petrie, for getting Derek Stingley, for getting Damian Pierce, for getting Kenya Green. They address the needs that they really should have running back, protection for your quarterback, whoever it may be, a, a guy that can move a body out the way, a, a DB, a safety, a, a cornerback that can play some damn good football. But if we're still going based off who their head coach is, who should not be fired after one year and Lovey Smith and his defensive scheme, which is an issue. We have to look at the defensive tackle position. We have to look at the DN position and we have to look at the linebacker position. I wouldn't be shocked if Houston goes defensive tackle linebacker with their first two picks or DN linebacker with their first two picks. You're always going to be able to find a receiver. I'm not one of those guys that's sort of stretched for a receiver. You're going to be able to find them through rounds two through seven. You're going to find somebody to play football for you. So they may do that depending on how they value some of those prospects coming out. And by the way, if they want to wait one more year, if they want to get a little bit more competitive, wait one more year for their quarterback. I knew this it's a God in Austin. <laughs> ATX that's coming out 2009, you know, 24 that they can wait for. So that's just me. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Listen, one thing about LinkedIn Jobs, it really, and I mean really, makes it easier for you. you post a job. Add your job, then go ahead and post it with the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. It's that simple, right? Very simple. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Locked On Texans your first listen every day. Make sure you check out NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL. Locked On local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football, plus betting advice from the field's leading experts, Bet Online. Follow NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL, available on the uh, Odyssey app, excuse me, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.
First and foremost, Coach Romeo Cannell, how are you doing today? It's an honor to be talking to you again, because uh, the last time we spoke was at the end of the 2020 campaign when you took over as head coach of the Houston Texans. How you been doing? I've been doing okay, Cody. Not too bad. You know, uh, since I've stepped away this time of the year, uh, you get a little anxious because mm. normally I'm busy and all of that, but this time I'm not as busy. So uh, I have to look for other things to do. Sounds good. Sounds good. And of course, you know, I want to talk to you about your, um, you know, your, 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 your career and stuff. But first, um, can you just explain your program about the huddle up? Let's talk about obesity program that you have going on. Well, you know, Cody, of course, you know, you know, my body type, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been dealing with that a little bit all of my life. And so uh, I felt like that this would be a good opportunity for me to be more involved with that. Uh, talk to players that I've coached before uh, and get exposure to to active players, former players and even fans who might be who want to get involved and who are dealing with uh, their weight. You know, and so uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me. And I know a lot of the guys uh, in the NFL alumni from my years in the league. So uh, and, and discussing it with them and talking about myself and trying to see if I can improve myself. Uh, I thought it'd be a good, uh, good match. And can you really quick, can you just talk about, you know, the struggles that a lot of Americans have with obesity? Well, first of all, the biggest struggle is that uh, the weight goes on really easy, but then mm -hmm. it does not come off. Mm -hmm. And so it takes more than just just want to. You know, you also have to have a um, an eating or diet plan as well as an exercise plan. And then um, sometimes even a, a medical person needs to be involved so that they can direct you uh, in in more positive ways. And so uh, I think all of those things coming together now, I think people are, are are looking at it a little differently and understanding that if they can take care of their weight, that they could prevent some other health issues that go along with um, carrying too much weight, you know, like joint issues, um, diabetes, uh, cholesterol, high blood pressure, and all of those things, you know, can be taken care of. And I know a lot of times, particularly us guys, we don't always necessarily want to go to the doctor uh, mm -hmm. and, and talk about whatever. But I found that in today's society, if you can discover the problems early on, that medically they can do something about them. And, and so, you know, getting that kind of exposure and getting the word out, uh, I think can be helpful to uh, a lot of people. Mm. And coach, um, for fans who might want more information on how they can get involved, um, you also mentioned it, you know, the weight is easy to take on, but it's hard to, to hard, it's hard to um, lose and stuff. Where can um, a lot of listeners, a lot of viewers, um, a lot of readers can actually go if they want to know more about the hurry, hurry up. Um, let's talk about obesity program. Well, you said it right there. Uh, there's the website, you know, uh, huddle up, uh, let's talk obesity.com, uh, NFL alum, they got it out there. And uh, it's, uh, it's an easy website. It's a lot of information. And so if, if people are interested in doing that, I think that they will find that can be helpful to them. Mm. Now, coach, you mentioned it. This is your first year you're retired from the game of football as being a coach on the sideline. You talk about how anxious, you know, you've been over the last couple of weeks because this is actually, you know, the first time in how many years that you don't have to worry about going through the NFL season. How has retirement been for you, by the way? Well, it's, it's been, it's been both good and bad, you mm -hmm. know, the good part, I'll start with that. I've been able to spend time with my grandkids uh, they're up in the Northeast, so I've been up there and, and uh, watching them a little bit. Uh, the mm -hmm. good thing about grandkids is that you can be with them and entertain them, and then you can give them back to their parents. You know? <laughs> and so that's good. Uh, 
you know, sometimes I wake up in the morning, particularly this time of the year, you always have something to do when you're in, involved with the coaching and being on the sideline and game planning. And so now, boom, I wake up and I don't have uh, a, a definite direction sometimes for that particular day. So then I just get on my wife's nerves at mm. that point. Uh, but it's been good, been able to spend more time with her, <clears throat> do do some personal stuff that uh, that you don't have the opportunity to do uh, during the football season. Mm. Now, Coach, I got to ask you, you know, you, you came to the Houston Texans in 2014 um, as a defensive coordinator, and that is where you spent the rest of your career. Um, how was that whole experience for you? Because, you know, with you coming to the organization in 2014, you have seen some of the good of this organization. You also, unfortunately, seen some of the bad as well. Well, I think it's been a good run uh, overall, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we came in and, and we were competitive in the division uh, and we got to the point where we were winning the division consistently, uh, got to the playoffs uh, several times, but we couldn't get over that playoff hump, you know, and, and mm -hmm. get to the big game. Uh, and so uh, then with the result after that, I think uh, things started happening. Um, losing players, um, guys changing minds about how long they wanted to stay with us, um, off-field issues. And so now the, the team then had to take a step back. And I think that uh, they are trying to regroup and go forward now. I, and I've seen a couple of the games. The, the young guys, they're playing hard. Uh, they've been close in games. They haven't, haven't been able to finish them yet. But I think that if they will continue to grow and work at it, then as the season goes on, they will uh, make a good representation of themselves. As one of the great defensive mind coaches of your generation, um, I got to ask you, Derek Stanley, Jalen Petrie, you're talking about two guys that's definitely going to get this organization back on the right track, probably sooner rather than later, the way they're starting their careers. What have been your thoughts about both of those rookies, those two defensive backs that the Texans well, have now? Yeah, I think that they are a good talent. Uh, they are not afraid to match up on some of the best receivers the opponent throws at them, and they are very competitive. They can make plays. So I think that that's a, a great start for the defensive backfield. And so as they go forward, they'll just get better because they will improve uh, with experience. Mm. And when you take a look at on the offensive side of the ball, young quarterback, young running back, you know, one thing I've been saying about the Houston Texans, it's a lot of new that went into this season. And of course, we all know it's a rebuild. That kind of stuff is going to happen. But when you take a look at on the offensive side of the ball, what have been your thoughts about Davis Mills, Damian Pierce, the rookie running back who, by the way, just had his first game where he recorded over 100 rushing yards? Well, that all oh, that's positive. You know, that's <laughs> very positive. When you got a runner take some of the pressure off the quarterback. That's good. That takes some of the pressure off the offensive lineman too, because you don't, they're not dropping back to throw all the time uh, that away. So I think that that's good. And that's going to help those offensive linemen and, and Mills, you give him time. He generally finds the open guy, you know, uh, it, but just like all quarterbacks, you struggle a little bit when you don't have time, you know, to make your reads and to get the ball to the open guy. And I think sometimes at the end of the game, that's been happening. He's trying to get, get the ball and get it down the field and gets tipped or gets intercepted. But I think overall, like I said, they've been playing hard. Uh, they just got to tighten it up, you know, and if they tighten it up. They're going to be able to win some games. Mm. Now, Coach, you you know, some you, probably arguably the best part of your career when you was with the New England Patriots winning Super Bowls. Then, you know, you had a little bit of a decline being with the Kansas City Chiefs. But, you know, as someone who's seen both the good and the bad of this league, what advice would you um, like to share to Coach Lovey Smith as of right now? Well, see, here's the thing about Lovey. Lovey has been there. He's been to the Super Bowl. He's got experience, you know, and I think that as he goes forward, uh, some of those young coaches that he's got with him, they will improve as well. You know, just like the young players, the coaches are going to improve. And then I think that he knows what it takes. He will get the right people in place, right pieces and put it together. And then it's going to be a very competitive team. Mm, really quick. Um, what do you miss most about the game? Just give me one thing that you miss most. It could be anything. 
Well, it, it's the competition, mm. you know. Uh, it, it's you trying to figure out what the opponent is going to do. You trying to get your guys revved up to be in the right place at the right time to make the play so that you can win the games. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting information this season. You can find all of the latest player developments, team matchup, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you could find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to BetOnline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this Friday installment of Locked On Texans. As you guys just heard and just saw, that was former Houston Texans coach Romeo Cornell. John, as you heard, as you saw, it was an honor. It was a pleasure. Um, had so much fun talking to Romeo Cornell. By the way, I think my favorite part of that interview outside of him talking about his retirement was him throwing a little shot at Deshaun Watson. You know, he said we had people who changed their mind, who wanted to be here. And then he said, then there was some off-field struggles. I thought that was very funny. Um, but John, Overall, it was just an honor and a pleasure to talk to Romeo Cannell. And I also thought it was fitting that I had an opportunity to speak with him during the bye week, especially considering the conversation that we had on yesterday when you look at what you and what, what B. Scott and what Sarge had to say about Lovey Smith as his defensive coordinator. And look, I understand it. The Texans, you know, that era where they had J.J. Watt, um, D Hop and all the rest of that, all the rest of those guys, you know, we could consider that a missed opportunity. But the one thing I would say, and one thing I always heard was how much credit guys like JJ Watt, Whitney Merciless, work merciless, gave Romeo Cannell as this team defensive coordinator, you know, basically since 2014, uh, how much he helped this organization um jonathan joseph like so many guys around this around this team love honor and respect romeo Cannell. and by the way i do want to give you guys some quick numbers when romeo Cannell was a defensive coordinator through his first four years with the houston texans the texans only gave up an average of 19 points per game and they ranked somewhere in the ballpark they defense ranked somewhere in the ballpark between seventh and tenth in the league yeah, you know, Romeo was one of those guys that <clears throat> helped my favorite team, the Patriots, win a couple of Super Bowls early on. <laughs> uh, I think that Romeo is – he is a – I don't know how to put it, man. He, he's just – he's a, he's, he, he's a guy that's well-respected, right? He's a he, – he's beloved across the league, right? He's earned that love. He's earned that respect. Um, and I don't think Romeo has always been in the most favorable positions, but he's made the best mm. of it, i.e., you know, maybe the last couple of days he spent here in the Houston, with Houston. Um, his time as a head coach, right? But I think overall, you know, I do want to mention what he said about, what, well, who he hinted how he felt about <laughs> when guys wanted to leave change their mind about how long they want to be <laughs> I, I, You got to look at that and understand that how much whoever that person is affected each and every person uh, in that building, man, because uh, people genuinely bought into him. And I think for, for a little while he bought in as well. However, fit has changed. And and it happened so swiftly, and I don't think nobody who worked in that building worked around whoever those people were, are, that person, whatever, worked around that guy, will ever uh, for, forgive him for that, right? And Romeo is Romeo is 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 a, is a coach who has hardware, doesn't need the legacy attached with any certain player because he's been able to get hardware at multiple stops, right? He is known for being a hell of a coach. 
And I think that ultimately that's how we will remember him, of course, uh, whether he was the interim. The first win for Houston, what was that, two years ago, was under Romeo Cornell. Mm-hmm. And they had Romeo dancing. And, and I remember he, that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I remember that too. And Romeo should never dance again. <laughs> but uh, players love Romeo. Coaches love Romeo. Romeo is a guy that if Romeo started talking football and if I'm with my wife, she may have to drag me away from listening to NFL stories, coaching tips, uh, just the, the, the minor details because you can get so <clears throat> caught up in it. Nothing else matters. And that's the type of guy he is, man. Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. I believe the Astros play Sunday, right? Um, Saturday. Not, I think Saturday. 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 Either way, the Astros will play over the weekend. One more win, and they advance. So we are praying for the advance. Go to the next round. Take care of business. Go to their World Series. Win one for Dusty. Hopefully mm. send him out in the sunset. Mm. But, you know, be safe over the weekend. I'm John Hickman. Make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Texan Podcast on YouTube. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, it's Cody, C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. It's the bye week. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's still watch some football. And let's take a moment to laugh at other teams' failures (laughs) and say, man, I wish we had that type of player here with the Houston Texans. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace. Will the Houston Texans trade for Justin Fields? Bye.